Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody today? Blessed and highly flavored. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice. A choice. Everyone said I have the power to choose. I choose life, not death. I choose truth, not deception. It's amazing how many people are still deceived. You know how you examine yourself? What's your greatest desire? What is your greatest desire? And I don't want to hear it. For some of us, it could be, I don't know. What is your greatest desire? Let me share something with you. This is a self-examination. If your greatest desire is not the presence of God, something's wrong. Does everybody get it? If the greatest desire in you is not the presence of God, something's wrong. Then there's idols, there's open doors. What was Jesus' greatest desire? He carried the presence of God. But see, without the presence of God, you cannot fulfill the will of God. Amen? See, so the enemy has been fulfilling a lot of things. The word says, forsake not to what? Assemble. And the enemy is preventing all of it. But so many people have been bound by fear. They're still masked. They're still not assembling. Preachers and teachers and whatever in the kingdom, they're bound by fear. It's disgusting. Totally disgusting. I'm not interested in watching services on a website. I mean, not unless I had to, and I had no other choice. But I want God's presence. And if you don't have a desire for God's presence, there's something wrong with you. Does everybody understand? That should be your priority of your life, not your family, not your children, his presence, because you're no good to nobody without his presence. Amen? His presence. And in his presence, his fullness of joy, in his presence. You know, when I first got saved, I looked for every church door that was open. And I waited for the ones that were shut. I wanted God's presence. I couldn't get enough. Because I knew without his presence, see, his fulfillment, my fulfillment is in his presence. Being a drug egg for over 20-something years and desiring all the other things of the world wasn't until his presence showed up and I realized it was him the whole time I wanted. Him. It wasn't about fame and success and about how much money I had. It wasn't about sex, drugs, and rock and roll anymore. It was about the presence of God. See, right now, this is where the separation is happening in the body of Christ. God is separating the bride from the body. And there are many people in the body that don't realize when the rapture comes, they're going to be left behind because they're not the bride yet. He's coming for the bride, not the body. And we are close. Amen? We are close. I encourage everyone, get your house in order. Get this temple in order. Get your priorities in order. Get it in divine order. Quit looking for fulfillment from the world. Your fulfillment is from God's presence. And he knows it. He knows that anything else that interrupts you getting into God's presence is an idol. Amen? Well, that was a word from the Lord. Let's go to the teaching. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11. Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody going through something? Don't raise your hand. Everybody's going through something. But you're going to go through it. The prop purpose of your trials and tribulations is to train us. Amen. But listen, if you haven't been trained by it, then you're going to keep repeating it. You're going to stay in there and God ain't going to let you move. 
You will never move forward until you complete what he's trained you for. Hallelujah. And what happens when people don't move? They look for another fulfillment. We live a life of advancement. Everything is moving. The kingdom of God is moving. The world and the universe is moving. Nothing's still. In verse 20, let's speak it together. Matthew 11, verse 20, it says, Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not what? Now, come on, man. They saw all of the works of God, and they still didn't repent. Sounds like today these days, amen? Amen. And he said, woe, woe means without eternity. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Basidia. But if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are ex exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades, which is hell. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it was seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. And take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow. <laughs> the word about yoke is to be bound a yoke binds he's saying come and bind yourself to me see right now i really believe that in this process we are in a process of learning to be bound in the spirit why so we can we can be used by god and we don't use god see there's a lot of people wanting to use god to get what they want but they're not really bound in the spirit. Amen? See, we want to be divinely used, not carnally used. Jesus even said, because many will come to him and say, Lord, we did this, we did this, we did that. And he said, I don't know you. Why? Because they did it in the flesh, not in the spirit. So they fed, they clothed, they sheltered. They cast out demons. They did all kinds of things. But it was not in the spirit. It was in the flesh. And it will count for nothing. Amen? The word tells us all of these things will be burned. Everything that we've done. That's how it's going to be judged. Whether it's from him or not. See, too many people walk in what we call blind faith. Blind faith is not sent by God. Faith is when you hear it, you go. Not when you believe it. Does everybody understand it? There's a lot of people that believe all kinds of things. Listen, we believe the word, amen? But in the word, by the spirit of God, we get wisdom. Wisdom tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. And discernment tells us when to do it. Amen? Everything is associated with God's time. If it's not in God's time, it's not God's will. Many people have gotten married out of God's time. Many people have bought things out of God's time, started businesses out of God's time. Why? Because they weren't truly acknowledging God and waiting for an answer. They walked out because they didn't get the answer yet, so they walked out on an assumption. An assumption is sin. Amen? 
I'm telling you, in this transition, God is preparing, preparing a blemish-free bride. We are in the process of learning to be bound in the Spirit, to be used by God, not to use Him. Acts 20. Is everybody okay? How many of y'all want to be divinely used? Praise God. I'm glad three of you are. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20. In verse 17. Is everybody there? Acts 20, 17. Let's read it together. From Altius, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you. Serving the Lord in all humility. Serving the Lord in what? Humility. That means humbleness. You can't be a servant without the Lord, but without eating a lot of humble pie. Amen. Hallelujah. You know from the first, <laughs> serving the Lord with all, verse 19, with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, terif or testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit. I go what? Bound in the Spirit. Let me tell you, Paul learned how to go bound in the Spirit. Amen? I go bound in the Spirit. Praise God. Does everybody understand about this in this area of being bound in the Spirit? Spirit. What happens is your spirit is bound to the Holy Spirit now. We are bound. See, the enemy likes to break us loose from the bond. When he puts you under bondage, when you walk away from being bound to the Spirit, you walk under the bondage of the enemy. Is everybody okay? Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me. How I kept nothing, nothing. Testifying to the Jews, to repentance, and see now I go bound in the spirits of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. See, too many people want an answer for everything. <laughs> Why? Because they don't trust. They don't trust. That should be an understanding. Look at your relationship. <laughs> you don't have to understand everything. Amen. But why, but when, and but how? But, but, that's the but ministry. We are servants of the Lord who trust God. Trust, why? Trust, trained righteously, amen? Under salvation's transcripts. Trust. Verse 23, now accept that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. Now look at what he responds to. But none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. So that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Wow. And indeed now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. Will see my face no more. Paul went bound in the spirit. His spirit was yoked to the Holy Spirit in humility. He didn't count his life. He didn't care what was coming. He didn't care what happened to him. He knew that this life was temporary, but his focus was on a more eternal purpose life, an everlasting life, not temporary. Amen? I didn't count my life at all. 
That's what he said. Well, see, that's a part of the law of the spirit of life. Because the law of the spirit of life says deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen? So he was actually fulfilling the law of the spirit of life. So he can maintain eternal life by denying himself. Is everybody okay? Everyone say bound in the spirit. Listen, when you're bound in the spirit, you're bound to the almighty God almighty. Bound to God. That's why the Holy Spirit brings us through a process of cutting us cut loose of everything that's holding us. Because many people are still not free. Many people still can't get baptized in the Holy Spirit because of too much stuff in their lives. They're still walking in religion. They have no relationship. You know, again, I want to express that after my visitation from the Lord, I didn't want the Word of God. I knew the Word of God right here in front of me all the time. I said to him, please, I didn't want to be a hypocrite like I saw so many people walking around with Bibles but not living according to the Word. That's how the Word kills. But they weren't living by the Spirit. I didn't want that. I said, Lord, please. He kept telling me I need to learn the Word of God. Learn. I said, man, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. He said, no. And then the Holy Spirit began to teach me because I was a terrible reader. I was afraid to read. Now nah, I don't care. No fear. Some of these word, these names are pretty ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> some of these names in the Bible are pretty intense at that time, you know. So some of those things will just float through, you know. But. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 20. Glory. Bound to Almighty God, divinely used. You know, when you come, when we become a believer, truly, there's a desire in your heart that says, I want to serve. I want to do something for God. Everybody wants to. If you don't, there's something, you ain't born again yet. <laughs> I want to do something for God, not something for myself. But then that wears off unless it's being restored by God's presence. Because, see, it was God's presence that first touched you, drew you, touched your heart, slapped you on the side of the head, however he got your attention. But that one touch from God, see, everybody has a touch from God. Everybody. And he wants you to remember it, but he wants you to bring you from touch, which is now a revelation. Revelation to revelation. Revelation to revelation. In between each revelation, there's a rest. That's called the measure of faith. See, so he's going to test your faith to see if you're genuine, if you're faithful, if you're consistent. If you're, he's truly your first love in everything. If he's your fulfillment. He wants to know where our heart's at because he knows, but he wants us to know. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse 20, let's speak it together. 2 Timothy uh, 20, what did I say? 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. So I said 20. I got 2020 on here. This is wild. Hallelujah. That means Trump's going to win. No doubt about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2. <laughs> if you found 20 in your Bible, I'd like to see it. <laughs> Let's speak it together. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Now, the house is a representation of the body. Amen. Verse 21, therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. 
Lastly, also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Again, associations bring impartations. Be careful who you hang with. Even, I don't care who it is. If they're not out of a pure heart, you love them, but man, don't hang. Don't hang with them. You know why? Because you'll hang with them. Hello? Yeah, I'm hanging with them. You're right. You're going to hang with them. You stay with them that long. Verse 20. <laughs> Verse 23. But avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Man, don't get into an argument. It doesn't matter. If you get in the argument, you're not allowing God to have the last say. Hmm. Servant of must, uh, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Teach. Everybody should be able to teach. Be patient. That's with endurance. And humility. Here we go again. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been kept, taken captive by him to do his will. And we see this all over the world. Every house you drive by that says Biden, they're in captivity. It's a spiritual captivity. Does everybody understand? Because they're deceived. I can't believe, it still bl blows me away how many cr so-called Christians, so-called Christians are promoting the death of the unborn. Perversion. They're still promoting it and, and voting it. And then what they say, oh, I'm a good person. Yeah, because you're eating from the tree of good and evil. But you're not eating from the tree of life, which produces righteousness. See, so those individuals don't even know what righteousness is because they're not partaking of the righteous one. Amen? Everybody okay? Praise God. Again, it's a representation in the body. It says, cleanse from the things that promote flesh and the things that are disapproved by God. How many of y'all, pride promotes flesh? In fact, <laughs> fear protects pride. Pride protects self, the offspring of darkness. He's saying we need to be careful about falling into pride. We need to kill pride. Amen? That's why he says, what's the opposite of pride? Humble. Be humble. There's an area of sanctification. That means separation unto God. Is everybody okay? Humility. By examining your heart full desires. What are your desires? Are they in divine order? You know what? If they're not, get them in divine order. It's that simple. You know, Lord, my desire has been this, this, and this. I haven't put you first. I've lost, your, I, I've lost the desire for your presence. I'm sorry. I repent. Restore it. Amen? What did Paul ask in the psalmist? He said, please restore to me the joy of my salvation. It's a simple communication with your Father by the Spirit of God. Listen, the measure of your death to self will determine the depth in the spirit you'll go. I'm going to say that again. The measurement of the death to yourself will determine the depth of the spirit you are allowed into. In James chapter 4, bound in the spirit. James 4, the measurement of your death to self will determine the death you are allowed in the Spirit. James 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody okay? Bound in the Spirit. We all should be, have a desire to be bound in the Spirit. Heck, we are bound to every other spirit. Let's get loose from them and get bound to the true spirit. <laughs> In verse 1, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? 
Listen, to, your heart is the core of all your desires. Amen? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. Some people say, well, I'm asking all the time. Well, you ain't asking the right thing. You ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your flesh or your own pleasures. He says, listen, you're adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. That's God's plan. It isn't, look it, grace is not God's um, unmerited favor. Do you understand that? Too many people are, oh, I, I, I'm saved by grace because it's God's favor. No, grace is God's plan. You earn God's favor by being obedient. His love for me and you is unconditional. Amen? He doesn't like the works of the wicked, but he reigns on the wicked and the righteous, doesn't he? Amen? His heart is to rescue everyone and that every wicked person would turn toward him, regardless of what. It doesn't matter what they've done. Because this realm is going to fold up one day. It's temporary. Where there's an everlasting, eternal place for those who who are willing to deny themselves in this place. Everybody okay? Oh, happy days. Therefore, God resists the proud, but he gives more of his plan to the humble. Does everybody see that? Grace is the plan of escape, isn't it? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, he'll what? Flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your what? hearts. You double-minded. Why? Because they're living out of their desires. Amen? Emotional desires. Dangerous people. God resists your human nature characteristics full of pride. That's your human nature. Amen? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. That's the carnal man. But he, but he gives an extension of his plans in favor to the divine nature. I'm going to say it again. He resists and rejects the characteristic of the human nature because it's offensive to him. That's why he said you must be born again. Amen? But he grants access to him through the divine nature. So if you and I are not a partaker of the divine nature, you don't have access to him. Is everybody okay? All oh, glory. Again, he extends his plan and his favors to the divine nature. It's humble, submissive. So we need to be in a place where we're cutting loose of the human plans to become partakers of God's thoughts and desires and his voice and his purposes. That's bound together in the spirit with him. We want to live a life of bound in the spirit. Well, your thoughts are no longer priority. His is. Well, your desires are no longer priority. His is. See, this is divine order, putting things in priority. You know, the devil comes and pushes. The Holy Spirit comes to lead. But I'm not telling you, listen, to be driven by the Holy Spirit is a desire to do the things that are of God. <laughs> Even Jesus was driven, amen. He, God drove him into the wilderness, didn't he? And then he was led into the wilderness. Amen? So we want to be led by the Spirit of God. We want to be bound by the Spirit. That's your Spirit bound to the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 2. 
Why? Because if you're not bound by the Spirit, you can't be divinely used. Galatians chapter 2. In verse 17. Galatians 2.17, let's speak it together. But if while we seek to be what? Justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgressor. See, many people get saved and they get freed and cut loose from all these bondages. And then they go back and build on them. God says that's a transgression. He actually calls it an abomination. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh or in the physical, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. See, we must maintain a position. An area to keep ourselves bound to the Spirit. So when the Spirit moves, we're with Him. When He says stop, we stop. When He says go this way, we go that way. We can sense the enemy trying to push us. We can sense the enemy trying to bring fear on us. See, when you are bound to the Spirit, you are directly connected to the throne. Directly connected. And listen, all resources, everything you need comes from the throne. It's directed by the th from the throne room of God, by the counsel of God, to move on people's hearts, to do whatever is needed. And let me share something else with you. It's beyond that. The resources are eternal. They're not temporary. That's where that place where nothing is impossible with God. <laughs> All things are possible with him. It's our own limitations of our own thoughts. Because as a man thinks, so he is. So when people rely on their thoughts and not the impression or the thoughts of the Spirit, there's great limitations. And they begin to look for something else to fulfill them. Whatever it may be. Is everybody okay? And without being bound, people become, they begin to drift from their position. And they become overcome by the enemy. Ephesians 4. Bound in the Spirit or to the Spirit. What a time to be alive. Watching all of the stuff that's going on in the world. I mean, it's awesome. The world is changing. It will never be the same. There's a transition that we are going into. I, I, I know you probably heard about the Vatican allowing, promoting same sex and so forth. Yeah, you know how many people are going to leave the Catholicism? Many. Yeah. All kinds of things are going on right now. Why? Because there's a preparation of one world order, one world religion, one world economy, one world government. Those three areas. There's a promotion of one world. But God's going to take it first. That's what he's doing right now. He's going to take it first because he's going to declare in this one world operation the gospel. So everyone will have an opportunity to get saved. And then he's going to come for the bride 
and then that which was held by God will be turned over and let the devil take it. Because then it'll be in the tribulation. And there'll be many saints left behind. There'll be saints then. Because <laughs> they're going to repent like crazy when they found out that they were left behind. <laughs> and they thought they were good people. Glory. Ephesians 4.20. Let's speak it together. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you had heard him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put off concerning your former conduct. That, remember your former conduct that was your desire was your priority? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Me, 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 me. Amen. It's all about me. Yeah. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It grows corrupt. It means it gets worse. It's lustful. And be renewed in the spirit of your what? Your mind, because as a man thinks, so he is. And that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, put in a way lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, first of all, with himself. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. That's called compromise. You know, people don't realize that compromise is sin. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessary edification, that it may impart grace or the plan to a hearer. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit with compromise. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. They've not learned Christ. If still promoting selfish will and compromises to the, to the flesh, amen? If they're still compromising their routine, God gives us a routine to follow. It's not a ritual. It's a routine. It's something that keeps us protected. Amen? Some people's never gotten a routine. They just get up in the morning and go, oh, thank you, God, for another day. And the enemy's not feared by them. Hallelujah. It's a righteous routine. It's of discipline. The Holy Spirit builds that in me and you. Amen? One of the things that you and I want to have a desire is that we align ourselves with the divine will of God. That's being bound to the Spirit. And whatever it is, is Lord, is this, is this approved by you? No? Yes? No? Yes? Does everybody get it? And listen, in your relationships, God will sometimes give you choices. He'll make suggestions. Maybe you might want to do it this way. He doesn't force you to do anything. There's a relationship where you and I must know, know the impression of God and the voice of God. But you're not going to get there without being bound by the Spirit and a partaker of the divine nature. It's impossible. You'll do whatever you feel like it. I get that all the time. Well, I felt like it. Bummer. Don't tell me how you feel. I don't care. Hello. Tell me what God told you. And it better be what God told you. Hallelujah. We need humility so we can humble ourselves and be led. So we can even be driven by the Spirit of God. We must be bound by the Spirit of God in the anointing. Ezekiel 36.
We get people come in, uh, and I know sometimes they're, they're not accustomed to worship. And they can't wait for the songs to end. It's because of the demons in them. They can't stand God's presence. And see, the, but the people will think it's them. Man, it's just too long. Oh, you're a lover of God's presence, all right. You're a lover of your own presence. <laughs> it's time to exchange your presence for his. Amen. 3623. Glory to God. <laughs> is everybody there? Let's speak it. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord. When I am hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, when he has taken possession of you. For I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your what? Those desires. Idols. And I will give you a new heart. Now, Again, God won't force, so he'll give you the unction to cooperate. Amen? He won't force you. It'll convict you to cooperate. And I'll give you a new heart, and I'll put a new spirit. A new what? Spirit. That's his spirit, or a new spirit in you. And then he will take out the heart of stone and give you of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit. There you are. So he's going to give you a new spirit by being born again. That's a new man. Amen. Then he's going to give you his spirit, which is going to be bound to your new man. Not the old man. The new man. Why? So you have dominion over the old man. Listen, the old man's not gone. You sleep with that thing. Amen. The old man is what keeps your flesh alive. Does everybody get it? That's why now your flesh... Hello? It's known as the fallen nature. It's a place of sin. It's the offspring of Satan. That's why when you were real young, you used to be called little devils. You little devil? Little flesh creature? Yeah. Because we didn't have dominion over the flesh. Did you ever notice it's always me, me, me with a little kid? They go to someone's house, they want all their toys because it's theirs. Even though it's somebody else's house. It's mine. Then you get in the car and you're like, where did all these toys come from? They're mine. Did you steal them from them? No, they're mine. You go into a store, everything they want because they de believe that they deserve it. This is mine. I want this. I want that. Why? Because it's always I, 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 I. Amen? Ay, ay, ay. Demonic pizza, right? Hallelujah. He said, I'll put my spirit, my Holy Spirit. See, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to allow God to take possession and to possess us with his holiness, righteousness, truth, faith, and power. You know, it was prophetically released, I think, uh, I don't know, a little while ago. I don't know if it was last week. I don't know. After a, a worship service where the Spirit was saying God's moving right now to possess. He, he's possessing back his temple. In other words, us. He wants to possess his temple. Remember when Jesus went in and kicked the tables over? He's doing that right now. That's why we're going through all of this stuff. See, but people don't realize that they're not sensitive enough that God is exposing certain things in their life. But because of the lack of presence of God, they can't sense it. And they'll stay bound. But it ain't bound to this Holy Spirit. It's bound to another spirit. Glory. Why? He's trying to take possession, trying to take us back. Because <laughs> what does he want to do? He wants us to carry out his commands 
as partakers in the divine nature in this world. Carrying out his commands in this world, not our own. You know, I, I want you to know that there is an urgency in my spirit that I've shared with my wife. Honey, I don't know if we have enough time to do what we're supposed to do. There's an urgency in my spirit. I'm going to the Lord, Lord, I want to fulfill what you want me to do in the short period of time that's left. There's an urgency in my spirit. There's a reverence that I don't have enough time to do what I'm supposed to do. And I hope you have the same thing. Because there's a lot we need to do. Amen? There's too many souls out there that need Christ. We, want, he wants to possess us. Why? <laughs> so that we can carry out the commands as partakers of his divine nature in this realm. Isaiah 31, no, uh, 2 Timothy 4, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy 4. Can you do that without being bound to the Spirit of God? No. Can you do that without being out partakers of the divine nature? No. Second Timothy four. Verse 1, let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead as his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Yes, release it. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own what? desires, emotions, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables, lies, deception. We see that right now. The, the, great, the falling away has already begun. Amen? It's already begun. He says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your calling, your ministry. We are in a time of itching ears, open to every voice of doctrine and influence. We must be a people bound to the Spirit to get us over to the other side of the dimensional veil. See, even though we live here, we're no longer from here. So the reality must be understood that there's another place, the unseen. We're from heaven. We used to be from hell. I've been told that myself. Man, you're from hell, B.C. But we're from heaven now. We're eternal. We're not temporary. We're no longer human. I keep telling people, why are you still acting like a human? With the carnal conduct, rebellious, disobedience, Grumbling, gossiping, and criticizing all kinds of stuff and whatever. Coarse jesting. Amen. Lying, cheating, manipulating. That's human. Desiring all the things of the world. I want to be rich and famous. Why? So I can buy everything. That's nice. <laughs> That's carnal. Itchy ears. Isaiah 31. Scripture. Oh, two more, sorry. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Isaiah 31. Whoa. 
Whoa. And that's not woe to a horse. Amen? Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, without eternity. To those who go down to Egypt for help, that means, listen, you were relying on the Lord at one time, now they're going to the world for help. And rely on horses who trust in chariots because there are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But who do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. He says woe to them. Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words. But will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall. And he who is helped will fall down. That's, in other words, he who promotes and votes for the things that are displeasing to God. They all will perish together unless they repent in turn. Many will go astray, not, seeing, not being bound to the Spirit. Because their desire is no longer for the life of God. It's the desire of life of self. Me, myself, and I. Hebrews 12. Again, this all goes back to the area where people are lacking the presence of God. Hebrew 12, verse 1. Humility is a wonderful thing. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen? And he will exalt you in due time. In other words, he's got something for you. Just stay humble. Eat humble pie. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with what? Endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. What is he saying? Compare yourself to Christ. Quit comparing yourself to man. Compare yourself to Christ. The word says, imitate God as ch dear children. Amen? Is everybody okay? And I'm going to close in Ephesians 5. How many of y'all know we need endurance? Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as what? Dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. When we gather together and worship the Lord, a sweet-smelling aroma goes up. Amen? Thank, I mean, it's awesome. Sometimes you can sense it yourself. It's like roses sometimes. Hallelujah. Although sometimes I think of somebody's deodorant near me or whatever, but <laughs> I have to double check that all the time. Lord, is that you or is that somebody's perfume or whatever it is, you know? Please don't wear perfume when you come and worship. <laughs> Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be, a sh be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, 
who is an idolater has any inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Are you going to find out without a relationship? Are you going to find out without reading the Word of God? Amen? No. Verse 11, have no what? Fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Expose them, even in yourself. Expose them. What is the desire? Why do I have this desire? Is this an ungodly desire? Is it a, God, a, de, a desire pleasing to God? For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by him in, uh, them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, from, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as what? fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, look at this next verse. Do not be what? Drunk with what? Wine, in which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for the things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God or reverence and respect to one another. Amen? Being bound in the Spirit. That's what God is doing right now. He's binding us to the Spirit. But you've got to cooperate. He won't force you. Amen? He's exposing all of the things in our life that are preventing the priority, the divine priority in our lives. Amen? This is a wonderful time to be alive. Let's not miss this. Amen? Let's be a part of the greatest harvest. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace. We thank you for the opportunity to partake of the divine nature. We want to be divinely used. And we repent, Lord, for using you in any way whatsoever, whether knowing or unknowingly. Have mercy upon us. Cleanse us with the blood. Heal us with your spirit. And fill us with your joy. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Prepare your heart for communion. You may bring up any offerings.